Hey guys, Higgy Pop here in the comic room. Thanks for joining me. It's another rainy day in uh, Connecticut, man. You know, so uh, just taking care of business. And I was down here in the hawk's nest. Thanks for joining me, man. It means a lot. It means a lot. I'm uh, I'm just hanging out. I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna go over a couple things after work yesterday. Actually, a couple things. I was at work yesterday, and I was what we call downtown. I was in New Haven, Connecticut, known for pizza and package stores. All right, whatever you need. A slice of pizza, hit the packy, and um, it's also known for Yale. Yaleys, the very, very high crime activity of these Yaleys. They're, they're rough and tumble customers, man. And um, down in, in the middle of this Yale situation, there's a comic book store. I was just working down there. I am a lineman, and I was in the manholes under under the streets of New Haven, pulling the cable. But I came out after I had, had lunch, and in downtown, there was this place called Alternate Universe Comic Book Store. I don't get there often because it's kind of uppity. And uh, so I went in there. It's very small. I go in there. It's like, right? And no one, there's none of this. Higgy, higgy. It's just like, egad, man. Who is this barbarian? And I'm just like, I got this now. That's another place. They go, if you start looking at comics and, you, and don't, don't dare open a comic. Holy mackerel. One kid in there, like a couple of years ago, with his, with his dreadlocks and all that stuff, he's like, hey man, what are you doing? I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll pull your lip up over your head. Don't make me pull your lip up over your head. So, you know. We ease things down. I tell you what, I, I this book was so great, Conan, this past week. I read it twice. I mean, it was so good, man. I don't know if I told you. He met the sword that so Conan's been using is was actually Brule, the spear uh, slayer from Cull, Cull's partner. It was the end of Brule's spear. That's the sword that Conan's been using. So when when Conan was down and out, he went into the, uh, the dark pool of death. And he had these tendrils grabbing him by the ankle, and he was about to die. Brule came to him in spirit, like like um like Mickey from Rocky, and he, and he told Conan, he's like, "Get up, you son of a bitch, cause Mickey loves you." And Conan is like, "Ah!" And and he and he kicks Cooley. He gets nuts. So this was great. I recommend this highly. Conan issue number four by Titan Comics. And then I wish. I wish I was a fish. I wish I got the Green Arrow. I, I've been following it up to this point, and I didn't get it. I love Green Arrow, man. But I, I, for some reason, I didn't get it. The other day, I showed you some uh, Firestorm, and I, I you know, I, I kind of rushed through it. But the only thing recently that I think of Firestorm is um, the Legends of Tomorrow series that came out with DC. These were thick. These were almost like a full trade paperback, and there was like one, two, three. There was like. There were six of them, and it, and it had Metamorpho, Metal Men, Sugar and Spike, Firestorm. These were fun, fun reads. Yeah, I should have got Green Arrow. Um, I I did Green Arrow, man. Any anyone with a bow and arrow, I I like you know, Hawkeye. This was a good read. This is issue number one of Legends of Tomorrow, and issue number two of Legends of Tomorrow. There's Metamorpho. There's Firestorm, Metal Men, Sugar and Spike. Issue number three, Legends of Tomorrow. There's Firestorm up on top. I was good. I was pretty good with the bow and arrow for a while. When I was growing up, my dad was a good archer. He had a uh, just a recurved bow. None of this fancy compound bow stuff. Right. I'll, I'll tell you a good story. This is good. Legends of Tomorrow, issue number four. Metal Man, Metamorpho, The Element Man, Firestorm, Sugar and Spike. So, I was probably like 11 years old. And my brother, Sean, he was five years older than me. He, I, I, my father was like, just, you know, leave me alone. Go, go in the backyard. Here, here's the recurve bow. Shoot arrows in the backyard at the woodpile. Innocent enough. What could go wrong? I mean, we live in a normal neighborhood. Houses everywhere. But hey, he was like, go ahead. And so he's he's inside watching TV, whatever dad's doing. And I go outside with, he gives me a bunch of arrows and I got the long recurve bow, right? And I'm shooting, I'm doing pretty good. I'm shooting at, at the at the wood pile, right? Then my brother Sean comes in. What are you doing? I was like, I'm shooting bow and arrows. Give me that, right? 
He goes like this. He goes, let's go of an arrow. And it goes, it, it hits the top of the wood pile. But doing, it skips and goes, goes through one yard and goes into another yard and hits a, a above ground pool. Ba-bonk. And you hear, clunk, 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 clunk. We're like, He's like, go get that arrow. I was like, I was like, I was like, uh, I had a mission. I was like, I was stuck. I was like, aye aye, Captain. I was like, don't, 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 don't. I had paint, black paint on my. I snuck into the yard. I grabbed the arrow and I run out of there. The water was pouring out of the pool. And then the next couple of day, the next like couple hours, we look out to the neighbors out there looking at the pool, going, what the hell? Hey, I don't know. Sometimes pools just get holes in them like that. It's weird. Anyways, Legends of Tomorrow, issue number five. Look at Firestorm, just ripping it up, baby, ripping it. And this is the last issue, Legends of Tomorrow, Firestorm, Metamorpho, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, these were good reads. Nice. A lot of reading. So, anyways, so when I was downtown in, in the Yale uh, area, I went to Alternate Universe. It's not my type of store, but I was digging, and I found, I found some beauties. I found some beauties, and here they are. Boom. I'm trying to complete my Invaders run. Issue number 25. All right, I needed this one, and I need like three more, three more for the Invaders. Look at Submariner, just taking a nap. He's snoozing. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of reading. All the stuff that got, uh, my sister sent up with the uh, with the kids from uh, South Carolina. Nothing finer. Sister Christian. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Awesome. This is something I very rarely see, and I've been looking for it for a long time. So long, I forgot I was looking for it. Secret Origins of Superheroes, 1978. It's got Dr. Fate, Light Ray, and the Black Canary. I read the, I went right to the back and I read the Black Canary story and it was real good, man. Real good. They show her as a kid, her father's training her and stuff. It's awesome. They show her join the Justice Society. It was great. I didn't finish reading this yet. Cool book, man. Boom. And I found I found this one. Secret Origins issue number six. I been looking for this for a long time. I never see it. And this thing is mint. I gotta watch my words. I don't want Nostril Domus to hear anything about mint comics or nothing. He gets crazy. Him and his organ. Got Blackhawk, right? Uh, superheroes and the Supervillains. Legion of Superheroes, Origin. Great stuff. It's real good shape. Look at that thing. Thing has a, had the light of day shown on it. No one goes through these books that I went through at Alternate Universe. And then, I already have this one, Secret Origins issue number one, the classic Superman cover there with, you know, Spectre, all these, everyone's on there, it's cool, it's good stuff. And I've never seen this, ever, I had to get it, it's an oddity to me, giant, weird Secret Origins, and this is pretty newer. I mean, it's got Kong Gorilla. I love Kong Gorilla. He's a golden gorilla with a consciousness of a guy, Bill. The Enchantress, El Diablo, and Animal Man. And I gotta say, I think this came out in 2004. I looked at it briefly. On the back is Rebirth. So that's about the time frame. Let's see. 2004, all right. So, Dr. Fate. The Enchantress. Uh, Congorilla. No, that's Animal Man, maybe. I don't know. I gotta see. I gotta, it looks like Animal Man to me. It looks like Buddy. Yep. Crazy. Okay, Metamorpho, El Diablo, 
El Diablo, muchacho. El Diablo, are you my muchacho? Hold on, I, I can do help. There he is, right here. I am El Diablo. El Diablo. Ah, I am El Diablo. Oh, yeah, look at him. Oh, yeah. Yes. He's like, hello, muchacho. He's got his boots on. Those boots were made for a walking. And who else we got? The Spectre. All right, man. Yeah, it's a cool book. The Spectre again. Cool stuff, man. All right. So I've never seen it. Came out in 2004. And, okay. So then I found Red Wolf issue number five. I already have it. I don't have a list for a Red Wolf. This is something new I've been buying. I got one, nine, and the, the last issue, nine. I got this one, five. Bah, bah, bah. Here's issue number eight I found. I was very happy to find this. Issue number eight, all right. Ron Wilson and uh, John Romita are on the cover. And uh, this is July of 73. Woo-wee! And... Uh, you know, Red Wolf's cool. He's a full-blooded Cheyenne Indian. He's very proud, very proud. And um, this is, uh, he fights King Cycle in this King Cycle gang. And Gardner Fox is the writer. And uh, the art inside is by Sid Shore. All right. He's going. They're closing in. We've got to break free right now or else. Too late, Injun. Too late, Injun, baby. Because we're hell on wheels. Boom, 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 I remember Homer Simpson on The Simpsons. He uh, joined a, a biker gang, and they were called Christ Punchers. That's a tough name. That's a tough name, muchacho. Okay, this is the creme de la creme. I love Showcase from D.C. I found Showcase, issue number 41, and I love Tommy Tomorrow. He's better than uh, Yuri yesterday. Tommy Tomorrow. Look at that. And this is in nice shape for a Higgy Pop comic. It doesn't even belong in the Hawk's Nest. All right. It's crazy. Crazy. And um, the cover's by Lee Elias. And uh, the art inside is by Lee Elias. And uh, the writer is Arnold Drake. And uh, November of 62, those were the days, oh yeah. And um, yeah, issue number 41, man. Look at that. Cadet Tomorrow's flunked the, this test, but, but good. Someone switched weapons on me. This one's useless against the Saturnian flying eel. Those are the worst. The Saturnian flying eels, my lord, oh boy. I remember as a joke, I threw one in the bathtub with my wife was in there. Oh, she was bent. She was bent. You'd think I threw a, a, a blow dryer inside the tub. I mean, Jesus. Anyways, she survived. All is well. All is well. We're still married. A two-part thriller featuring the origin at the West Point of Space. Nice. Nice. So then, after work, I go visit my mother. And then I had like a half hour before something closes. And what is it? There was a flea market down the street from my house. That happens twice a year. I shot over there because last, I'd say about six months ago, there was a vendor there I met. His name was Arnie. And he was still there. This guy's older than dirt. I mean, he, he makes dirt look great. And I picked up a few things from Arnie. I picked up Luke Cage, issue number 13. All right. September of 73. Yes, indeed. This is Billy Graham. He's the artist. He did a lot of uh, Jungle Action and Black Panther, and he did uh, all the Luke Cage, and uh, he, he's, uh, he's awesome, man. He died in 97. He was only uh, 61 years old, but he's known for Luke Cage and Jungle Action. Steve Englehart was the writer, and uh, yeah, man, it's great stuff. Fights Lion Fang. Lion Fang dies in this one, supposedly, and uh, good stuff, good stuff. I'm cranking out the Luke Cage. And I found this one. This one is a grade of whoa minus. This is Teen Titans issue number eight. And as you can see, there is some problems. But it's cool. It's cool. 
all of my Teen Titans Volume 1 are in rough shape. There's no getting around them. And um, April 67, all dogs go to heaven. And uh, Nick Cardi and Sheldon Maldonado are on this cover. And uh, they fight some crazy uh, honey bun, the robot. You could you could have came up with a tougher looking name. I mean, a tougher name. I mean, uh, hey, honey bun. Who'd you get beat up by? Oh, honey bun. Honey bun just laid a whooping on me. And, um, yeah, this was reprinted in a showcase, but this is issue number eight of Teen Titans. Robin, the boy wonder, Aqualad, Kid Flash, Wonder Girl. Kill the Teen Titans. Kill the Teen Titans. Kill the Teen Titans. Yeah, I'm on a big Teen Titans kick because all these characters are featured in the, in the um, world's finest Teen Titans that is out currently, and I like it. And... I'll save something for last because I it's something special. This is very special to me, too. World's Finest, issue number 228. It's a 100-pager. Huh, Shannon? I call this a fatty. Nice. Batman's dead. Then as his son, I succeed him. No, you don't. I do. This guy with the funky-looking slippers on. And uh, who is the mysterious intruder? Daring to demand the crown for a new Batman. And then there is Aquaman versus the Land Sea Beast. Metamorphose Chemical Miracles. And Eclipso Hideout on Fear Island. But I really got this because of this. Vigilante, the Broadway posse. There's a vigilante story in here. I love vigilante. Ah, wait, you old howl who can't wait to read that. And then, the last thing I got. Charlton, Charlton. We're doing the Charlton. Do 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 do. Charlton Comics, Judo Master. I love it. I love it. I didn't have this one. This is Judo Master, issue number 96. Pick up sticks. All right. He's going. The acrobat returns. And he kicks him in the lips. Right in the lips. I love it. I love the original Judo Master, man. Awesome. Awesome. Charlin. Charlin Comics. Look at this. All Judo Masters up on top there. This is just... You can't beat this, man. You can't beat this with a bat. You can't. I'm very happy to own this. So, I think today... I think today... It's raining out, like I said. And, um... It's crazy. The, um... It's raining, it's been raining every weekend. And uh, that's just the way it is around here in New England, man. I was, uh, I was thinking. I... Let's go over some westerns. Yep, and uh, just real quick, let's see. I got some right on the uh, spinner rack here. Uh, actually, I, I showed you these recently. Let's look at some different westerns. All right, here is Billy the Kid. That, uh, Western Outlaw. This is a golden age. All right, this is November of '57. You old owl who? All right, Giordano's on this cover. Imagine that, a young Giordano. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Billy the Kid. Woo! <laughs> Wahoo! Classic. And then I got, let's see, Kid Cole Outlaw Marvel Comics, issue number 171. All right. Rawhide Kid, issue number 114. There's those Comanches. Nice. Rawhide Kid, issue number 124. Don't mess, don't miss the gunfight with Yuri Yerby's Yahoos. 
Look at him. He, he, he's got the underhand. He's going. Pachoo! Rawhide Kid and Matt Slade, two gun kid. Those who live by the gun. That's issue number 33. Let's try this. The Ringo Kid. It's 20 Center. Issue number 13. He's got a buck knife in his back belt. He's saying, maybe the sheriff made a vow not to draw on you coyotes. But I deal in justice. The kind you owl hoots deserve. You old owl hoot. This is April 72. Cuckoo Kachoo. I am the Eggman and he is the walrus. That's a Gil Kane. Insane in the Gil Kane. Gil Kane is insane. And, um. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's a reprint. 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 There's Rawhide Kid. Blazing Western Action. This is issue number 111. And, uh, reprint. Jack Kirby cover. This is May of 73. This came out from Marvel. He's riding an old coal, coal cart. Oh, yeah. Charlton, Charlton, I'm dancing with a pistol. Yeah, da, da, da. Dancing with pistols is safe. Running with scissors, that's a no no. No bueno, muchacho. All right, this is Gunfighters. Issue number 79. They're not gunfighting, they're fighting with tomahawks. Nice. That's the Cheyenne Kid. And. One of my faves, Batlash. He's a ladies' man. He licks his eyebrows. And uh, Nick Cardi cover. That's a classic. He's a wanted man because your ladies want him. Danny O'Neill's the writer. Sergio Argonis. Nick Cardi cover. Oh, yeah. N November of 68. Close the gate. This is Charlton Comics. Charlton, Charlton, you know the song. Gunfighters. All right. Charlton, Connecticut. Hits here in Derby, Connecticut. Did you know that? Derby, Connecticut is Charlton. Jesse James, Andy Oakley is in this one. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. That's number 55. Okay, this was a... This is a four-part... Uh, series. This is by Topps Comics. All right, and uh, this is the Lone Ranger and Tonto. All right, Kim Osabi. I read this. This is uh, entertaining. Entertaining. Four issues. And we got two, two, two. These are Wyatt Earps reprints. I showed you these recently. I'll put these aside. All right. All Star Western. All-Star Western, issue number 79, DC Comics. This is a Golden Age 10 Center. Those are the Trigger Twins. There's a bear. That's uh, November of 54. Shut the door. You're in the wrong saloon, partner. And uh, Gil Kane. Gil Kane in the end brain. Gil Kane's insane. He's got no brain. He's Gil Kane. That's a classic, man. I love I wish, I love the pink sky. I love the art altogether, man. Awesome. Awesome. Johnny Thunder and the Trigger Twins. Classic. All-Star Western. Ringo Kid, issue number 20. He's a long-legged mag daddy. Ringo's the fastest gun alive. Not for long by the looks of it. Rawhide Kid. I love this cover, man. This is issue number 72. The Menace of Mystery Valley. I just love that cover, man. You got old Grizzly Adams. It looks like Uncle Jesse from Dukes of Hazard is laying a whooping on Roscoe. Roscoe P. Train. Coo, coo, coo. All right. Charlin, Charlin. Billy the Kid. Issue number 140. Don Diablo and his pet vultures. That guy. What a jerk. Who has a pet vulture? Not me. No way. Remember Conan, the barbarian movie, where he was crucified on the Tree of Woe? 
and the vulture started picking at him, and he grabbed, he bit it by the throat, and went, and he killed it. Classic. Should have got an Emmy for that. All right. Here's a classic 10 center. Cheyenne Kid by Charlton Publications. It's a golden age, baby. Fat of the land. All right. This is great. This is Blazing Action Filled Sagas of Top Gun Super DC Giant. S-22 copy. What's your vector, Victor? This guy's panhandling. And these guys are going to hold him up. All right. This is February, March of 71. All sorts of stories in there. You got Batlash, Johnny Thunder, Nighthawk, Matt Savage. Matt Savage is, um, is, uh, oh man, hold on, hold on. I read this recently. Max Comics, Apache Skies. Listen, you got to get this. The four issue series, it's the best story going. I'm telling you, and the ending is awesome. You have four issues, one through four, you got to get it, man. Awesome stuff. Oh my God, so good. John Ostrander. Did a great job. Did a great job. All right. Here we go, baby. Outlaws of the West. It's the law of the West. All right, Charlton Comics again. All new, Cheyenne Kid. Number 96, this is the 20 center. All right. And the long search. Charlton Comics, all new Billy the Kid, issue number 112. All right, this is like a, it's almost like a trade. An illustrated adventure by R.A. Jones and M.C. Weimer. This is in the Old West, only dead men fight fair. Pistol arrow. See how thick it is? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I read this a while ago. And Charlton Bullseye. Charlton Bullseye. Why is this in here? It should be in here. It should be in here. We'll put this over here. Okay. Red Wolf issue number two. Day of the Dynamite Doom. All right. Sid Shores is on art. This is July of 72. Red Wolf issue number five. Red Wolf issue number nine. I got this the other day. All right. That's September of 73. Covers by Ron Wilson and John Romita. And I got this at a um, at a tag sale years ago. It's just Dell Comics. It's uh, the Golden West Rodeo Treasury. And, oh, we're getting into some uh, weird Western tales. Issue number 13. Weird Western Tales, issue number 19. Right. Weird Western Tales, issue number 20. With little Jonah Hex. Don't ever creep up on Jonah Hex, ever. Issue number 22. And issue number 23. Issue number 27. This one is a grade of whoa minus. Great cover though, man. Awesome. Awesome cover. Issue number 30. Gentlemen of the jury, how do you find Jonah Hex? Well, sir, I find him like this. And issue number 31. Let's mix it up a little. Let's see what else I can find. Issue number 32. Classic. Classic. Let's see. Jonah X, Jonah X, Jonah X, Jonah X. Jonah X, Jonah X. There's some more. Um, skip over to some uh, Kid Colt Outlaw 217. Nice. 
Rawhide Kid, Blazing Western Action, as you like it. Issue number 145. This is 1976, Pick Up Sticks. Uh, Cheyenne Kid, this is modern comics, reprint from the, uh, Charlton. And this is like a, a trade about Cisco Kid by Rod Reed and Jose Lu Salinas. Just the back. And um, let's see. Indian Warriors, Accepted Publications, Golden Age. They're burning up the wagon. Johnny Thunder, issue number two. Johnny Thunder, issue number three. I got this on the cheap because that's how they did those comics back in the day. They molested the, the corners of them. And here's the Trigger Twins, issue number one. Huh? And here's Black Rider, Apache Kid, and Matt Slade again, issue number 15. Yeah, so, I don't know. Let me show you some of these. Here's Straight Arrow, all right? This is issue number 19, Golden Age Straight Arrow. And here's Pow Wow Smith, All-Star Western. Issue number one. All-Star Western, issue number one. Copy DC Comics with Pow Wow Smith. I love this story. This is a good story. It can't be. The outlaw's trail suddenly vanished, and so has he. What is the challenge of the fadeaway outlaw? All right, guys. Hooey! You are not old cow hoots. You are old owl hoots. Thanks for joining me, partner. And you know what? It's been real fun. I'm going to learn how to read. I'm going to read my comics because they make me smart. Mm-hmm. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I'll catch you up later, y'all.